I'm just thinking about really small things. In fact, what the, in the kind of smallest things like atoms and subatomic particles, I suppose. Whatever the smallest things are. Because when I imagine small things, and I'm sure I'm not alone in this, when I imagine the smallest things, you know, the indivisible whatever they are, I imagine them as little tiny balls or little tiny pieces of gravel, maybe. You know, very, very hard. Incomprehensibly hard, in fact. You know, the hardest things you can imagine. No sponginess about them at all. In fact, so hard they might almost be repellent. But, but you know, completely um, featureless spheres. That's how I imagine them. In my mind, they've even kind of got colours, actually, as well. A lot doesn't make any sense. <sighs> but I think... Because you know, the, the, this is where our imagination fails, isn't it, really? Because of the uh, the limits of our capacity to imagine certain things. My capacity, certainly. But I think it's, it probably applies to all of us. The you know when we try to imagine stuff like that, the only the only way we can do it, the only way we can try to understand and imagine, is by using the imagination that we've cultivated in our lives by having a sensorium that we walk around in, and through the the actual physical senses that evolution's provided for us. So we can only imagine those using those limits. You know, I, I can only imagine the ultraviolet light by imagining it as a kind of violet, and I can only imagine infrared as it being a bit like red. But it's not red, no, it's not violet, they're just conceptual metaphors, sensory metaphors. And I think it's the same with small stuff. You know, particles, I imagine them as being little, as I said, little tiny balls. And um, But I don't know why they're hard, that's one of the things that I find interesting right now. I don't know why they're hard. Why is it when I imagine the smallest thing, I imagine it as a tiny hard thing? Maybe it'd be more interesting to try to imagine what a tiny soft thing would be like. Um, I know that's as equally wrong, but maybe it just leads to different kind of conclusions in your thinking. Or equally, not wrong really, but that's not the right way of looking at it. It's just a different um, uh, metaphor. You know, because there, there is a history of, I think it's a um, Greek probably philosopher called, it looks like Thales on the page, but it's probably pronounced Thales or Thales, T-H-A-L-E-S. It was uh, apparently, you know, said that everything was made of water when they're all looking around for things, what was things were made of. And somebody did come up with atomic theory then. don't remember who it was. Democritus, maybe? Somebody. Aristarchus said, you know, everything's made of little tiny balls all linked together. But Thales or Thales or Thales said everything's water, which I think is quite nice. You know, the idea that the microscopic nano scale or the tiniest scale imaginable, it's not little tiny balls of hard stuff. It's liquid. Or maybe even more than that, you know, maybe even at the most microscopic scale, if you get inside the liquid somehow, it becomes gas. And it's like swirling gas in there. But swirling so fast and with such force that it's like putting your hands under one of those hand dryers or like a Dyson air blade dryer. You know, I've never seen a Dyson air blade. You put your hand in the Dyson air blade, it's a really powerful jet of air, warm air comes out. You know, enough to move your skin. So it's almost like there's a hard thing, but it's not, it's just air in motion. Um, you know, maybe at the tiniest scale, a way of looking at the tiniest scale, rather than little balls. It's like little tiny whirlwinds. But nothing is being whirled, you know, there isn't, there isn't the wind to be whirled, it's just the whirling. But it's whirling so fast and so intensely. And doing such interesting things at that scale. But it's a bit like little tiny hand dryers. The whole world is made of hand dryers, I think, maybe. Maybe that's a productive way of looking at it. Or in motion. Or maybe something, I don't know, maybe if you get past that. I think that's the limit though, isn't it? I mean, we, our, our senses are limited to those things, really, solids, liquids and gases. You know, we can't even imagine plasma, really, other than think of it as another kind of gas. So, um, so I think once you get to the gas, gas in motion, even though that's as equally incorrect as a way of describing the microscopic. At least it pushes it away from the little tiny balls. You know what I mean? Little tiny balls. Anyhow. Yeah.